Today we're gonna make pretzel rolls, which I love because unlike the sourdough that I usually make, which is this whole three day production, you can decide at 4 p.m. that you want delicious pretzel rolls with your burgers or portobello burgers for dinner, and you can have them ready by eight. So today we're gonna make pretzel rolls. Let's get started. Start by adding the oil to the water, dump in the brown sugar, and whisk to combine. I'm going to do this in a stand mixer, but you can also make this dough by hand. Add the flour to the bowl of the stand mixer, dump in the yeast, and give it a little stir. You want to avoid having the salt come into direct contact with the yeast, because that can kill the yeast. After you mixed, add the salt, mix again to combine. In the bowl of your stand mixer running on low speed with a bread hook attachment, pour in the wet ingredients. I like to pour them right into the center, I find that ends up with the least amount of flour stuck to the side. Let this run on low speed for two minutes or until all the dry and wet ingredients have been incorporated. It should look like this. At this point, I'll increase the speed to three, or medium low, and I'll let it go for eight more minutes until the dough is nice, smooth, it's clearing the sides of the bowl, and it's super elastic. If your dough isn't coming together and clearing the sides of the bowl within two or three minutes of increasing the speed, Add flour slowly, tablespoon by tablespoon, until it does. This can happen if you're either using all-purpose flour that might not have as much gluten, or maybe you put in a little bit too much water. So after about 10 minutes in the stand mixer, the dough is already much smoother. You can see it's nice and elastic. And for pretty much any dough that I need in the stand mixer, I'm gonna finish kneading it by hand, both so that I can get a good feel for how much strength the dough has developed, and also just so I can knead it into a nice, neat ball. I'm just gonna knead it quickly. You can see it's already nice and smooth. The kneading motion that I like a lot is I will pull and stretch with one hand, and then I'll fold it over, and with the other hand, I'll spin the dough around 90 degrees and repeat. Pretzel rolls are a great project for newer bakers because this dough is really easy to work with. It's not super wet and sticky. In general though, when you're kneading, you wanna focus more on stretching than on squishing the dough into the counter. If you squish the dough into the counter, it's gonna to stick to the counter and it's gonna be much harder to work with. Once I'm satisfied that the dough is smooth and elastic, I'm gonna form it into a nice ball for proofing. To do that, just drag it around in a circle on the counter two or three times until it comes into a nice tight ball and then uh, drop it into your proofing container to proof. I'm gonna proof it in uh a cabinet that I've retrofitted uh, for proofing dough, but you definitely don't need to buy some fancy proofy box, just put it somewhere nice and warm. 75 to 80 degrees is ideal. Uh, I don't usually cover it with plaster wrap, I'll just use a damp towel. And I'll uh, we'll come back in an hour and a half. So the dough has been proofing for about an hour and a half. You can see that it's almost double in size. This dough doesn't need to totally double in size like some doughs. And if it gets really big and puffy, that's a sign that you've actually let it proof for too long. The first thing you wanna do is punch it down. And I like to just use like one swift punch because if you go really slow, it's gonna to stick to you. Once you punch it down, you're gonna turn it out of the bowl using a bowl scraper to avoid ripping out all the nice gluten that you built onto your countertop. Got our dough on the counter. And what we're going for here is a nice log, about three inches in diameter and about 12 inches long. So with the help of the bench scraper, I'm just gonna roll it up into a nice log. It's gonna stick to the counter a little bit. Don't worry about it. We're gonna add flour as soon as we start shaping the pieces. For dusting flour, I'm using a mix of rice and all-purpose flour here, but you can use anything you have on hand. I'm going to give it a quick dusting on top, roll it over, and then we're ready to divide the log into individual rolls. Now that we have our log, it's time to divide it into individual pieces. I usually aim for a piece about 150 grams. That makes a nice, hefty roll for a burger, but you can go smaller or larger if you have a different preference. So here's one that's only 115. Don't worry about it. All you're gonna do, just cleave off about the right amount. Toss it on top. Now we're at 140, still a little low. Do a little more. Now we're at 161, perfect. And I'll show you how to deal with that in a sec. So once you shape these, I'll just toss a bowl over them 
just to keep them from drying out on the counter while I'm shaping. Let's talk about shaping. This is the part where what you do has the biggest impact on the final result. The goal here is to create a smooth and taut top surface, which will ensure that our buns rise nice and tall in the oven. To do this, start by stretching the roll over your thumbs or fingers. You can feel how tight the top surface is. If it feels really loose, tuck the ends in and repeat this process. You're looking for a smooth top surface with lots of tiny bubbles. Once you've done that, we want to seal the bottom. I usually do that by pinching the bottom of the roll between my thumb and index finger. This usually leaves a tiny seam, which I'll pinch together with my fingers. For the final step of shaping, we actually want the roll to stick to the counter. Make sure your counter is free of flour. I usually actually just give it a quick misting of water. Pop the roll onto the counter, cup your hand over the roll, and run your hand in a circle over the roll. We're doing this to increase the tightness of the top surface. As you do this, the roll is going to get tighter. Give the roll a little poke. You want it to rebound quickly and completely. Once this, is, once this happens, you can use your bend scraper to pop it off into your hand and toss it on to a prepared sheet tray for your finished rolls. After you do this for all the rolls, we'll leave them to rest five or 10 minutes. So if you have small hands or maybe the rolls are really big, you might not actually be able to fit them under your hand when you're shaping. So if that's the case, no worries. You're just going, instead of cupping your hand over it, you're just gonna put both hands next to it and run it in a little circle. So it's the same motion, you just have a hand next to it instead of a hand on top. After the rolls have rested, you can see they've already increased in size quite a bit. At this point, we want to stretch the rolls into their final diameter. They're going to get taller, but they're not really going to get wider. So you want to make sure they're as wide as you want them to be for your hamburgers or portobello mushrooms or whatever you want to put on them. Flip the roll over. The bottom side is very sticky, but the top is not. And stretch it between your hands until it's the desired size. After you stretch them, leave all the rolls to proof for 20 to 40 more minutes. The rolls have been proofing for about 30 more minutes, and what we're looking for is that if we poke it with our knuckle, they're going to refill, but very slowly and not quite all the way. Take four cups of water, add a quarter cup of baking soda, and bring it to a vigorous rolling boil. So we have our little assembly line set up here. We got our rolls, we got the boiling water with the baking soda, and then we have a wire rack with some paper towels underneath. You're gonna take your bench scraper, grab a roll, flick it upside down into your spider, and then just let it in the water. And we're gonna go 15 seconds on each side. and just pop it onto the wire rack. We're gonna leave them sit in the wire rack for about five minutes. The last step is to score the rolls. I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. The best way is with a lom, basically just a razor blade attached to a stick. With a lom, you're gonna to go top to bottom, rotate 90 degrees and do it again. You wanna do this confidently and quickly. The dough can definitely sense fear I find it can be helpful to place your fingers just past the crossover point when you're making the second stroke to prevent tearing. The other way you can do this is with a pair of kitchen shears. Open them wide and make two perpendicular snips. You'll want to reopen the seam with your fingers a little bit to prevent it from sticking shut when you're baking. These bake for 20 to 25 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I recommend rotating the whole tray at about 10 minutes to get a nice even browning. Cool, it's been about 20 minutes, so let's take a look. Overall, they're looking pretty good. The things to watch out for with pretzel rolls are areas where there's a little bit of undercooking. So this is like yellowish area here. You want to cook until there isn't any more yellow because these yellowish areas can taste quite soapy. Uh, it's from the baking soda. So I'm just going to put these in for two more minutes and then we're good to go. Alrighty. So these look good. 
as you can see, the one that we scissor score did not come out quite as nicely as the others, but it does the job. It allows the roll to expand upward without uh, getting blowouts on the side. Anyway, once you pop these guys out of the oven, just toss them onto a cooling rack. Wait 30 to 45 minutes, and they're good to go. Thank you.